have a store that just never disappoints. It is reliable every single time. Well, I certainly do, and it is my thrift store. And I'm gonna show you the amazing thrift store find that I got and transformed. in my dining room and it is undergoing a transformation. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but we have got a whole lot of moving parts going in this space. I'm really excited to transform it. My current project is working on this arched alcove right here. Now, originally it had some dark paint and I placed in an oil painting, which I really loved, but it was a little darker. I wanted something that would brighten up this space and I knew that a mirror would be a perfect solution. So I began my search. I looked online, I looked in stores, I looked on Facebook Marketplace with no success, zero. I could not find something that was this size <laughs> in my style and also in my price range. So as a last ditch effort, I decided to go to my thrift store. I went and I found this mirror behind a couple of other knickknacks and other mirrors and it was perfect. The perfect size. There was minimal damage to it and as you can see, that price was only $40. Definite score. So I scooped it up, I brought it home and now I'm going to transform it. The first thing that I had to do was address the nicks and the scratches and the dings. Now there weren't too many on this particular mirror, but I thought it necessary to sand down those raised edges where the scrapes were and really clean it up. I washed it really thoroughly and dried it. The reason why I do that is because the paint will adhere better to the frame if it's a clean, dry surface. So next I need to protect the actual mirror itself. I ran out of butcher paper, so I needed a solution. And guess what? Plain old wrapping paper is going to do the trick. So I got everyday wrapping paper and I placed it over the top of my mirror. And then I also got some blue painters tape and I taped along the edges. Now that my mirror is prepped and ready for paint, I took it outside and I decided to use this Rust-Oleum spray paint. It is a, by the name, a metallic warm gold. I haven't used this color before. I wanted to give it a shot. I liked it because it's more of a champagne color and not a bright gold, which is gonna be perfect in this dining room. So I began to spray my mirror frame in this paint. I made sure that each part of the frame was evenly covered in the spray paint. I got inside the mirror and on the outside in all of the divots and intricate design detail. Once I was finished with the first coat, I let it dry for one hour and then I came back and I did the exact same thing. I sprayed each part of the frame in the spray paint. I made sure it was even and completely coated and then I let it dry completely, which took two hours. Now that it's dry, I can bring it back inside and I removed that wrapping paper and blue painter's tape to reveal a brand new mirror. Simply cleaning it up and giving the frame a fresh coat of paint completely transformed it. This mirror is pretty stunning if I do say so myself. And it looks like I spent hundreds of dollars, which you guys know I would not do, so I just spent the $40 on the mirror and the cost of spray paint. So it was so affordable. I placed it up against the wall. I haven't hung it up yet because I want to make sure that I have everything else set in this place before I make a permanent hole. So right now it's just leaning up against the wall, but it still just makes a huge difference in the space. It reflects light back into the room. It reflects the beautiful chandelier and it makes the space feel so much larger. I tell you, do not sleep on your thrift store or Facebook marketplace or even garage sales. If you just keep your eyeballs open, you could find a treasure. 
If you're looking for a beautiful piece of wall art that needs just a little bit of love or simply a paint change, try those places out because like me, you may end up with a treasure that did not break the bank. Today, I am participating in a collaboration with several very talented YouTube ladies. Our theme this month is craft your stash, which is code for use what you have at home. Now, the host of this collaboration is Liana from Liana DIY. I will leave a link to the playlist as well as Liana's channel in my description box below. So head to the playlist and find out what these amazing ladies did with just things that they have at home. month's theme is craft or stash, which basically means use what you have at home and don't spend any money. So my next project is going to be just that. When we purchased this home several years ago, it came semi-furnished and some of the artwork that's still up on the walls is original pieces that the original owners had. One of these pieces is this floral wall art that's been hanging in one of the guest bathrooms. I think it's just kind of okay but I know that we can turn it into something better. My first step was deciding what kind of art I wanted to put into the frame, and I really liked the idea of the floral art, so we're gonna go in that same direction. I created these geometric round flowers. They are similar to each other, but not identical. These are actually going to be a template for me because I want to create some 3D art. How are we going to create this 3D art, you might be wondering. Well, we're just going to use some hot glue. Yes, we're going to use some hot glue. So what I did first was I took my template and I needed to put something over the top. I needed something that I could easily remove the hot glue from once it was dried. So I decided that I would use some backing from some transfer tape. I typically just throw this away, but I saved it the last time I used it. And if you see, as I put it over the top of my pattern, you can see through this backing and to my design below. So I put this backing right over my template and taped it in place. And then I got out my trusty mini hot glue gun. This thing has been loved. I've had it forever. I spent maybe a couple of dollars on it. It's nothing special, but it does the job. So just know that you don't need a fancy glue gun to make some 3D art. So all I did was I took my glue gun and I traced along the floral lines. Because the backing is fairly transparent, I can easily see the lines that I needed to trace over. I continued to make some lines with my glue gun to create these flowers. Once I was done with my first flower, I moved on to my second flower and I repeated the exact same process with the glue gun. I just traced along the lines and then finally I created the third hot glue flower in the exact same way. As you guys know, hot glue dries lickety split, so I only had to wait a few minutes before I could peel my hot glue flowers off of the backing. It came right off. And look at how cool these three-dimensional geometric flowers look. These were virtually free to create, and now I have some unique 3D flowers. I thought I would test out another method for you guys, just in case you don't have transfer backing. I just got some parchment paper, and I did the same thing. I placed it over my geometric flower, taped it in place, and then I hot glued the flower, let it dry, and then peeled it off the parchment paper and it came right up. So parchment paper will work equally as well. I did not want to leave my hot glue flowers in this semi-transparent state, so I decided that I was going to paint them. And I'm using some champagne metallic paint that I purchased at Michael's. I just got this paint and a paintbrush and I began to paint each one of my hot glue flowers. I made sure that each flower was completely saturated in the champagne gold color and then I let it dry for several hours. As the 
an alternative to painting the flowers, I know that you can get some colored hot glue. I have some and it's got some sparkles in it. It wouldn't have worked for this particular project, but I know that if you don't want to paint things, you can just buy some colored hot glue and that would work just as well. Now that our 3D flowers are complete, it's time to turn our attention back to the frame. Now I thought it was going to be just as easy as removing the flower from the mat, but as I took it out, I saw that everything was glued together, which is problematic. So we are gonna to have to move on to plan B, which is to cover up the flower with something. Now that something happened to be some marble contact paper that was left over from another project. I used it to put over the top of a marble riser that I created, I think it was last year. So luckily I had this contact paper in my stash. I measured the size that I needed and then I got my rotary cutter and I cut out a rectangle. I removed the backing from the contact paper and just stuck it right over the top of the existing flower. I used my scraper tool to press it firmly to the mat. This also helps to get the air bubbles out so that it lays flat. Now we have a fresh blank slate. In order to have my 3D flowers pop, I wanted to put a darker color behind it. And so what I decided to do was get some cardstock. I got a black and gray herringbone cardstock and I just cut out some circles. To adhere my flowers to this cardstock, I'm again going to be using my hot glue gun. So I put some hot glue on the back of my hot glue flowers. Not very much, just enough that it would make it stick to my circle. So I did that and I just pressed it right in the center of the circles. I did that for all three of the flowers. Once all of my flowers were stuck to the cardstock, I got some double-sided tape, placed it on the back of each one of the cardstock circles. Then I put my three circles in the center of my mat, equidistant from each other. Once everything was in place, I simply took my floral art, placed it back into the frame, and now it is complete. I love the way that this art looks. It's so much more modern and classy and elegant. The best part is I created this artwork from items that I had around the house. I literally did not purchase one single thing to create this wall art. And I love the way it looks. I think it really has enhanced this bathroom area. So just know that you can take something that you have around the house and enhance it and make it better. And it doesn't have to cost you any money to do it. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we will have this dining room done in the next couple weeks. We've got a lot of moving parts right now. So make sure that you check back and make sure that you're subscribed too so that you won't miss out on the big reveal. Well, I hope you got some inspiration today or some ideas of how you can create some affordable wall art for your home. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching.